Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Canadian Shield. My name is Sterling. I'm your host. I happened upon the greatest example of the contradiction of the far left in Canada. I really enjoyed watching it, and I want you to enjoy watching it too. I'm going to let you watch it in sections so that I can show you the breakdown of it. Before uh, I get into it, though, I'd encourage you to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, share this channel with all of your socials. I have memberships if you wish to support the channel further. All right, so to lay, lay the groundwork for you, the Liberals were announcing a bunch of taxpayer dollars to rebuild the wharf in New Brunswick. And in eastern Canada, especially in New Brunswick, the Liberals love to play their oh, we are French card. They rely heavily on the French vote, the Liberal Party does. Even though it doesn't look like they're going to be getting much of it in this upcoming election. Oh. So Minister LeBlanc, was, who's from New Brunswick, who represents New Brunswick, was part of this. Uh, announcement. However, um, before we get into Mr. LeBlanc, we had to hear from this fellow who's probably the MC of the entire, you know, he's probably the local minister, the local guy in charge of it. So let's just listen to what he has to say. I'll be uh, reading some text before we move on. I want to begin by acknowledging that we are gathered today on the traditional unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq. First of all, shout out to the guy with the flag. <laughs> Good for you, bud. There you heard him say, right? He's um, acknowledging the traditional lands of the Mi'kmaq. Now another dignitary comes up and starts to talk, and I want you to pay close attention to the breakwater behind her and the boat that's coming in. On behalf of the Point Duchesne Harbor Authority, I would like to welcome and thank everyone for coming. All right, so she keeps talking, and that boat keeps sailing forward. And it's astounding what is on that boat. Let's have a look. I would like to take this opportunity to also thank all that contribute their time and efforts to bring this project to fruition. We are on the final. So right here, I want you to pay close attention to that flag. That flag is the Acadian flag. And I'm going to explain to you here in a second exactly. I'm going to give you a good shot of it, and I'll tell you exactly who the Acadians used to be and who they are now and how all of that ties into making the acknowledgement of the land look quite foolish to any of us that have paid attention to any of it. Stage with construction starting in October of building a new breakwater, which will then complete the final phase of this project. So this is what the flag that it was flying. This is the Acadian flag. And the Acadians are an interesting group of people as it pertains to using words like the traditional lands of and all the rest of that, which if you are from the East Coast, you are probably slightly aware of it. But if you're not, you're in all likelihood not aware of the massive contradiction that they are throwing out right now. All right. Acadia, to understand who Acadia, what Acadia is, you first have to realize something. So you've heard of Marco Polo and how he discovered North America, and he did so for Spain. And he discovered what is today known as the Caribbean. However, when he got back to Europe, there was a lot of people that were sailing into other regions looking for other lands and riches and all the things that they were explorers, we call them now. Canada was discovered by the French, not the English. They discovered Newfoundland. They discovered they were the first ones to sail up the St. Lawrence River. And they did so in the course of three or four voyages. The fella got lost at sea, and then there was a, a gap in the middle. And when they finally decided to send people over, like the English sent them down to the 13 colonies, but the French sent them to you know, Quebec and they part of Nova, what's parts of Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, which are all part of the Bay of um, the St. Lawrence before it becomes the river, right? Which is irrelevant because what did they call that region of territory, which I think they, they founded officially in the 1600s? Well, they called it Acadia. What was, was today known as Nova Scotia and New Brunswick in those days was known as Acadia or French Acadia. And it was that way until the Spanish War of Succession in Europe where the English defeated the Spanish side and 
the, it was primarily the French and there was a, um, a treaty called the treaty of Utrecht and it, it's in Holland, I believe. And they hammered out a deal where they would give many of the new world possessions to English control. Now the English took a huge piece. They took most of Nova Scotia and they contested New Brunswick and they contested Cape Breton, which did not get passed to the, to the control of the British Cape Breton being an island separate and all the rest of it. And then during the seven years war, okay, so first they said, okay, everybody has to swear loyalty to the King of England now, because here you are, we're renaming it Nova Scotia, which is Latin for new Scotland. And we are going to be under the, the British flag now, not the French flag. And if you don't like it too bad, swear loyalty to the, to the English or else. Then a generation goes by and we start what England, uh, North America starts what's called in Canada, the seven years war, what's called in the United States, the um, French Indian war. And the, it was the Acadians were accused of supporting the French during this war. So the fellow who was in charge of Nova Scotia at the time said, swear or get out. And he threw all of the French people out of the province, out of the region of Acadia and took control of Cape Breton and things of that nature. So these Acadian individuals began to walk and many of them were deported to parts of the United States because the territory of that French controlled at the time started in Halifax, essentially, or well, it started in, you know, Cape Breton and it finished in what is today Louisiana. So all of that was controlled by the French at the time. They did, you know, at the end of the seven years war, they lost control of all of that, but that's a different video at the time though. It was all French forts and French territory. And it was just part of the process because the, the English technically didn't take North America from the first nation. They took North America from the French and the first nations gave the French the control. Again, that's a different video. What I want to point out in this video is there was is a resurgence of people saying, oh, look, we were kicked off our lands, the lands of Acadia, which if anybody wants to pay attention, what is today, the Acadians are what you and I would call the Cajuns, right? So that word got twisted and morphed and they went down to Louisiana. They didn't stop in Quebec. They just went all the way to Louisiana. And today we call them Cajun, but it didn't. In the, at the time when they left Nova Scotia and New Brunswick, they were called Acadians. So here you have this group of people with the Acadian flag sailing up behind them. There's no other region of Acadia. There's nowhere else to go. There's no, it's not like they're, they're, you know, imported from somewhere. It's not like they're saying, well, my first loyalty is Norway or something to that effect. These, this is Acadia. This is the land that they, the one guy who wants their vote just said is the traditional lands of the Mi'kmaq. However, they are also the traditional lands of the Acadians. And because of things that I won't go into in this video, they are also lands of the Métis, though they are not the lands that the Métis lay claim to. There is a resurgence in Nova Scotia right now for a lot of the Métis are saying, hey, wait a second, I am Métis, but my family hid our uh, French roots because we didn't, you know, because of the local culture and this, that, and the other thing. And that's a big deal to the Métis that are, in the country because now you have to get acknowledgement and you know there's dna tests and who knows how that's being handled but what i want you and i to laugh about is how there's no way in the world that they can say we are standing on the traditional lands of the Mi'kmaq as well as standing on the traditional lands of the acadians the acadians claim this part of the country and say that the same things they say that the english took their land took their farms took their the exact same things but yet there's never any land acknowledgement until that Acadian flag goes flying by. And I promise you that same guy who made the land acknowledgement to the Mi'kmaq when nobody's looking, he will make that land acknowledgement to the Acadians. <laughs> and so you can see what really they just want to do is separate and, and categorize everybody and put them all into different little groups so that they can sit there and try to control us with their little strings 
you and I have to realize that they're doing that. And then we can say, okay, well, we might have some differences that we need to hammer out, but let's not vote for these guys because these guys are clearly not handling it correctly. We, you know, we got to let the past go and we got to start to sort of live together right now. So let's make it the best deal for all of us together right now. Anyway, I'm going to wrap here. I just wanted to show you that the absurdity is, well, right there in video, right? All right, I'm going to wrap. I want to thank y'all for listening. I'll talk to you next time.